Over the past 10 years, SDK has delivered total returns of more than double the S&P 500 without a single dividend cut. To be fair though, SDK is a tech fund, so if we compare total returns to the NASDAQ 100, yep, beat that one too. The best tech companies are extremely profitable, so I want to invest in them, but as a retiree, I want income, not a roller coaster of gains and losses. SDK solves this by extracting income from technology and distributing it two ways. A managed 46 cent dividend every quarter, and secondly, generous special dividends when the portfolio delivers superior returns. We're here for the dividends, so let's take a look. And I use the term dividend loosely, it's technically a distribution. This chart is mostly flat because the regular distributions are managed to always equal 46.25 cents. Identical payouts since this fund was created in November 2009. The spikes are special distributions. These are paid out when the capital gains are unusually high. If you were lucky enough to own this fund in 2017, 2018, 2021, or 2022, you scored some huge special dividends. As I record this, SDK is priced at $30.01. If you held SDK in 2022, the yield on today's price is 6.2%, but because of the special distribution, you actually received a yield of 9.8%. Big difference. This is important because if you just look at the yield on say Yahoo Finance, the special dividends aren't shown. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, but what I can do is review the 48 page annual report, the fact sheet and seven Seeking Alpha articles and tell you as a retiree who favors income, what I found interesting, including my thoughts on actually buying the fund. SDK is a closed end fund that extracts income from tech stocks by distributing stock dividends, covered call option premiums, and capital gains. I explained closed end funds in previous videos, including this one about UTG. The key differentiator is that unlike ETFs, they can trade above or below their net asset value. This is important when it comes to pricing, which I'll address a little later. The tech stocks in SDK's portfolio are highly concentrated on, and these are in order of weighting, semiconductors, software, and then hardware. Beyond that, SDK is also more concentrated in specific companies than the NASDAQ or even the NASDAQ 100. Almost half the fund consists of just 10 stocks and the total fund is just 58 stocks. So before investing in SDK, it's important to make sure you're comfortable with that level of concentration. Looking at the top 10, we all know these names and might have heard of these names. But what about the number one holding, LAM Research? It's 7.76% of the fund. I have to admit, I wasn't familiar with that name. Ticker symbol LRCX, LAM Research, is a semiconductor equipment and materials business. They don't make semiconductor chips. They make the machines that make the semiconductor chips. They sell those machines to companies like Intel or NVIDIA who manufacture the chips. If you've never looked into the semiconductor industry, the level of complexity will make your head explode. I'm happy to pay a fund manager to pick these companies because I can't begin to understand what it is that they do. Here's a tiny sample of what LAM Research actually does. LAM Research provides speed gap fill high density plasma chemical vapor deposition products and striker single wafer atomic layer deposition products for dielectric film solutions. Simple. Let's get back to the language that I actually understand. LAM Research is up 45% year to date. They pay a tiny yield of just over 1%, but that yield has been growing at a rate of 29% per year, and that's a staggering rate of growth. So I feel pretty good about it being in the portfolio. Some of STK's income comes from portfolio dividends, but most of it comes from selling covered call options. This is a fairly conservative strategy that generates income by selling the rights to the upside of a stock or an index. SDK's covered call strategy is more dynamic than other covered call funds. They write the calls on the NASDAQ 100 index, nothing special there, but they dramatically vary the volume of the option contracts based on expected volatility. The basic strategy is laid out in their most recent annual report, link in the description. They use the VXN index to measure volatility and the higher the volatility, the more calls they'll sell. Why is that? Because as expected volatility increases, so does the income on the calls that they're selling. When the VXN reaches 55, they can sell covered calls equating to 90% of the value of the portfolio. But when the VXN is low, as it happens to be right now, they sell fewer covered calls equating to as little as 
25% of the portfolio. The result is far more potential asset growth when volatility is low and increased income when volatility is high. Beyond this defined strategy, the fund gives the managers some discretion to tweak it further. For example, the fund manager has the latitude to sell up to 25% more calls than the defined strategy. They can also sell options on individual stocks, which they do occasionally. By comparison, a fund like QYLD always sells calls on 100% of the portfolio, regardless of volatility, thus severely limiting their upside. Fund fees are 1.13%. That's high compared to most ETFs, but about average for a closed end fund. It really doesn't make sense to pay a fee that high unless the fund managers are very active and they produce superior returns. And SDK does both of those things. So I'm okay with the fees. It's common for closed end funds to use leverage to boost returns. We've seen examples of that, but not in this case. There's no leverage for SDK. Tax treatment will vary by year, but it's mostly long-term gains. There's some short-term gains. Occasionally, there's a small amount of income or a little bit of return of capital. Here's what I like about SDK. The fund management team is led by Paul Wick and he's been there since day one in 2009. So as long as he remains there, I expect the team will continue to do a good job of picking stocks and managing their covered call strategy. The performance speaks for itself. If we look at total returns versus the S&P 500 and the more relevant NASDAQ 100, SDK beats both over one year, five years, and 10 years. And let's take a look at the competition. I currently hold BlackRock's BST fund, another tech-based closed-end fund. I'm not a fan of QYLD, but it's popular, so we'll throw that into the mix as well. SDK wins again for total returns over one year and five years. We can't view 10 year total returns because BST and QALD aren't that old, but we can go back as far as 8.7 years and SDK wins again. So why do I bother with BST? First of all, even though BST is a tech fund, it's a different strategy to SDK. So it offers diversity within tech. Also, you can see that SDK and BST have outperformed each other depending on the time period. Secondly, BST pays a higher regular dividend, currently around 9%. As for QILD, I'm still confused as to why people buy this fund. I think they're maybe mesmerized by the yield that's around 11.5%, but that doesn't compensate for the fund value falling over the past 10 years. Anyway, that's another video. These total return charts include dividends and they're not available on Yahoo Finance, but they're easy to use on Seeking Alpha. I also use several of the in-depth articles from Seeking Alpha to research this video. If you haven't used it to find great dividend stocks and funds, I suggest using the link in the description and you can take it for a test drive with a free trial. Here are the risks and concerns that I have about SDK. Tech stocks are of course volatile and when they go through a correction, so will this fund as it did in 2022. So you have to be okay with price volatility. SDK has enough history to assess its ability to outperform the market, but it was created after the 2008 recession. So we don't know how it will hold up during a sustained economic downturn. Short-term corrections like the 2020 pandemic weren't a problem. SDK stopped paying out capital gains at that time and switched to return of capital. That's okay as a temporary measure, but if there's a deep recession for several years, return of capital isn't sustainable. So a dividend cut in that scenario would be likely. Historical average yield for the regular dividend is about 7%, but it's currently in the low sixes. And that's a sign that the price is currently high. A more obvious indicator is that it's currently priced more than 12% above its net asset value. And that's right at the very upper end of the range. If you buy SDK, you're paying for the fund manager's ability to pick great tech stocks. That's what drives most of the returns. Secondary to that is their ability to tweak what is a pretty decent option income strategy. I think SDK is a compelling way to generate income from tech growth. The income isn't going to grow steadily, it's going to be decent most years and then excellent when tech has a particularly good year. And I'm okay with that. As I record this, SDK is expensive, but I really wanna own this fund. So I'm gonna to have to be patient. I don't know when the next correction will occur, but when it does, SDK is currently number one on my buy list. I plan to start accumulating it at $28 and then increase the size of my buys with each 50 cent reduction in price. I'd love to pick up a bunch at $27 or below that would be even better. That wraps it up for SDK. More armchair income coming soon.